Hey everyone, I'm Sean. And I'm Tiff. And today on season three, episode six of The Random Division, Tiff, what are we talking about? Our truth. <laughs> our truth or my truth? No. Your truth? Our, my truth. Your, your truth. Your truth. The truth. The opinion. We're not talking about the truth. That's the opinion a whole that thing. is the truth to me. Okay. In other words, we're talking about The Bachelor. <laughs> this is the special two uh, episode week. So we're on part Ooh. two of the two episodes that have dropped this week. Um, that's a total of five hours of content of The Bachelor. Um, it's exhausting. I don't recommend it for anyone's health or well being. If there were cliff notes or an abridged version, I would highly recommend that's someone what, make that are. and then that's what distribute are. it to us. Yeah, I guess we're supposed to be the abridged version. We definitely, uh, I took some notes and you took some notes, I'm assuming. We didn't watch it at the same time. Yeah. Um, I think won't. the takeaways are probably going to be similar with the rest of America, although I have not seen what Twitter is saying about last night's episode. I didn't either because I watched it. I watched it on DVR late last night and you just watched it before we started recording. So I didn't, I did not watch along with Twitter because I got one little spoiler from the episode when I went on one time. Um, Mm. I learned, I I learned about something that happened in the show later on that I hadn't seen yet. And then I was like, I'm just going to close this because curiosity killed the cat. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Beware of hashtags. So let's do it. Like this is, this is the first episode I think that we watched of this season that actually felt like it had a normal structure and you could sit down and talk about it just in a kind of a re not a, I guess in a recap format where we, we can just kind of walk our way through this through the episode. Right, like we go from one on one to yeah. group date to yep. another one on one. Yep. Yeah. And a rose so, ceremony at the end. Like the whole thing. Right. Is, it's is, the format is back yeah, to the normal. It was norm. nice and cozy. It was like a weighted blanket, you know. Right. Just, just kind of made it's me familiar. Feel little, to it's us. very familiar. And we are in uh, Santiago, Santiago, Chile. The only other time that has been referenced in any pop culture that I can think of is, do, do you know? What's Santiago. That? Yeah. I think that's, I think I'm thinking of Anchorman. I think you're thinking of Anchorman too. But that's actually Santiago. That's, yeah, it's um, something about Mary. Oh, really? Yeah. A throwback movie. Yeah. The, the guy, one of the guys who's going after Mary is claims to be an architect, and he has only built buildings in Santiago, Chile, when he's challenged by like, oh, what buildings have you built? And that's his go-to, because no one has ever really been to Santiago. <laughs> um, and he now does. we're there. And now we're there. You said something um, while we were going through this episode that you liked, and I think I liked too, that we are going to places that are non-English speaking and our bachelor is able to fluently just kind speak of communicate Spanish with the with the locals, um, which is kind of great. I can't think I can't remember where they where they sent Juan Pablo. Um, yeah, or if there's been any other bilingual bachelors or bachelorettes. Um, I'm sure there have been. There probably but have been, but it's 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 a I can't think of a time where it the bachelor guy got to show off that capability. So we're in Santiago and we start with thirteen ladies. Thir- thirteen ladies? Is that how many we have left? Well no eleven. At, at the beginning. We have eleven. Wait. We're left with eleven. Oh, eight? We have eight left. There's eight. There's eight left. But in the beginning of the episode, how many are sitting at that table drinking frozen margaritas? There's eight. There's only eight of them? There's Sydney. Victoria F, Kelsey, Hannah Ann, Madison, Natasha, Vicky P, McKenna, Tammy. Oh, I'm thinking of Monday night. We would have had 13. Yeah, they're already blending together for you. Tiff, mm, come on, mm-hmm, come on. Mm-hmm. One, so, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we're seven, down to eight, six. Nine. We have nine right now, and then and we finish this episode with six because we lose three women. So we've got nine women. They're sitting around. They're drinking something that looks delicious. All the same in a, like an hourglass shaped glass. Um, no idea what it is. And McKenna is kind of defending her self for taking Peter off to the side before the roses were handed out. And Tammy doesn't really say anything. And she's the one who did it first, um, Monday night's episode when there was no, when there was no cocktail party, 
rose ceremony starts and Tammy says, Peter, can I talk to you for a sec? Um, Because that whole Kelsey nonsense. So McKenna's defending herself and really... You can tell that none of the women really want to listen to McKenna say no, anything and anymore. they actually show and a f- neither do I show a clip of Kelly's face, and you just see Kelly going, oh, yeah, like I just don't like, please stop, yeah, yep, like um, secondhand embarrassment for her, right? So Victoria P as well makes a face they, that they show, yeah, they're just tired of McKenna overstating, just overstating, yep, um, and Victoria F comes at her a little. Yep. She big time. She says, "Well, you did have a mini cocktail party before the rose ceremony. It was unacceptable. Um, it was just it was disrespectful to the other women. And then you have a sidebar where v- v- what's her name again? Victoria. Oh my god, I was about to call her Veronica. Victoria F is telling the camera separately that McKenna is an annoying, whiny wet dog, I think she called wet her. Wet dog. Um, used super creaky voice as her imitation. The and fact is, if Peter li- if Peter liked you, no, that's not what she how says. Does, what does she do? She, she says something like, "Oh, because you're not, not getting, getting your time." time. Yeah. yeah, very similar to what Sydney did on Monday night. Yeah, after she these got in her fight. Girls are <laughs> so young. Yeah, they really are. It's an extension of high school. I mean, they haven't. They weren't even in high school that long ago. Yeah. So it's just an extension. Yep. Um, all right. Especially McKenna, who's 22, who just turned 23 this week on Instagram, I saw. Um, so she gets kind of called out. Victoria F. is nasty to McKenna in face-to-face and in her ITM. And then, once again, Peter has such a knack for this. He's getting so good at it. All the women are kind of bitching at each other. Nasty, and he comes in and is like, "Hey, ladies, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Everyone's so happy, right?" He just got his right? stitches out. He's happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's still got his. He's he, they're kind of like he's got like a little plaster on his forehead, and he takes Hannah Ann on a little uh, Santiago uh, jaunt, and that's their one on one. So he just hops, jumps in one on one time with Hannah Ann. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, now, uh, what I sensed from this is that based on his one-on-one last week or earlier this week with Kelly, Mm -hmm. he had, he was, there were some seeds of doubt planted by Kelly. I don't think in a malicious way, Mm -hmm. but Kelly was essentially saying, Peter, you have Hannah Ann here. I don't, I don't even know if she used Hannah Ann's name. But she was referring to the fact that they were she young women. She did use Hannah Ann. Oh, she did. Okay. Yes, because she said, I like Hannah Ann. I'm not, I'm just saying that we are on different levels. Yes. Like, she's in a different place. How, do you, are you sure that she's ready for marriage? Like, have you talked to her about this? Is that, is that, a, is that the type of person that you're interested in? Yeah. Because if so, that's not the same type of person that yep. I am. Good catch. So, on your part. he left that conversation with Kelly. And remember, he was really convincing Kelly to fight more for him he was almost begging her to be into him and then they you know they had their date it was fine it was an awkward date but I think with that knowledge Peter was feeling a little uneasy about Hannah Ann and I think that's why she got the first one-on-one yep like he's like maybe Kelly is speaking some some wise words here and I need to actually check this out and investigate um so that that to me was what this date felt like. And it felt like an interrogation on Peter's part where he's trying to really understand is Hannah a serious person? Yeah, we also can't forget um, really good catch on the Kelly comment from last episode. We also had she, uh, Sheanne when she left last week. The last thing that we heard was her telling Peter, you got to watch out for some of the women in the house. Um, and this did, this episode did feel like. He was doing a little bit of house cleaning. Now yes. that, like now that I remember yes. that happening, and and I watched it like one and a half times because I I had it it was on in the background while you were watching. He is definitely trying to sniff out the liars in, For sure. in your. In, <laughs> I to, know. To use your, uh, I was harsh. To your phrase. I was really no, was harsh. Great. Last you were right week. on. You were right I on. I was calling them all liars. Uh, so, so so we get Peter asking Hannah like straight up 
what are your like career goals? Yeah, like, he what even you... references her age. He's like, you're, you're 23. 20. He, I think he might have even said like, you're 23, right? <laughs> <laughs> just, just making sure. Um, yeah. So he asked, he asked her if she'd ever had a serious relationship, which she claimed she did for three and a half years um, from her hometown, but she wasn't in love. Yeah, she said she's never been. She's never been in love. Uh, he just seems incredulous that she is ready for. Uh, marriage. Yep. And what I, I feel bad for Peter here because Hannah ultimately says to him, cause you know, he's like, why are you into me? Why? Like, what is it that you feel for me? What makes you so sure that this format and like you being here is, is going to work out. And she said, the qualities that you possess are what I've been raised to want to have wanted to have wanted. And, and- you could even, if you go back and rewatch it, she, as she's saying it, she's almost trying to catch the words before they get to Peter's ears at the very end. I think she realized this. So the, so you're, we're, we're at the dinner part of the date now where they're like sitting down and Peter's grilling her about her career. She's actually pretty honest about modeling, which I appreciated. She was like, it's not really a job. Um, but she said she's going to do it and take advantage of it. Yes, which but, makes I, sense. but I think she sees it as not the like the thing she's going to be doing for the rest of her life, um, which is good. Like at least she has that. She goes on mumbo jumbo about shallow ends and minnows and going into the deep end. Um, very strange, uh, kind of like meandering references, just trying to make it seem like she's got depth and she wants to yeah, go. Yeah, you only things. catch minnows in the shallow waters. Yeah, so. This part of the interview, because that's exactly what it felt like. It felt like it was a job interview. And Hannah's face, she was so hard to read. She almost looked like a doll. Mm -hmm. Um, And every time, like Peter would ask a question and she answered it almost like a pageant contest. I know she's not a pageant person. I thought she was when we were watching and then you corrected me. But she just had that like rehearsed feel. Peter sensed it, and Peter gets up and just leaves. He's like, "I need a sec," which is a well, theme because, now. Because she, he is sensing from her that she's being artificial. Yeah, or she's being careful to say the, a perfect thing all the time because that's how she's going to win Peter. And he is, he is not, he does not want to be with someone who is as superficial as she's coming off, and he just cannot she's not giving him an honest answer about whether or not she's actually ready for marriage and he's starting to thank god he sees through it because she's probably not and there's nothing wrong with her being 23 years old and not ready to commit to a serious relationship there's absolutely nothing wrong with that it's just in the context of this show you can't let that show yeah ever you got to keep your poker face on yep so she doesn't have a good enough poker face for Peter. He gets up, he leaves. Um, he's just really wanting to understand what, he, what she's feeling, what she's truly feeling. She's not being honest about it. He has a conversation with the producer. Is no. it a producer or you're, he just walks you're away? Of Victor- you're oh, thinking I'm, of Victoria. I, yeah, you're right. I'm confusing these. The, 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 you're confusing the two walk-offs on the one-on-one dates because um, it happens with Peter and Victoria F. as well. So Peter, in this one at least, we don't see him talk to a producer, but he goes off and he kind of is circling um, in some dark courtyard. And Hannah chases him after. We have no idea how long she sits there as Peter's mulling things over and trying to process what Hannah's saying and what she might be feeling. I mean, it's possible maybe one of, maybe Hannah Ann's producer said something to her, like, hey, you need to go and start crying, work up the tears. So then that's what happens, right? She goes and suddenly she's telling Peter that she's falling in love with him. And Peter, who continues to do this, um, says to her as she's crying, like, this is all I want. This is what I'm looking for. He just wants her to cry a little. But he, but he's saying that anytime the, anytime a woman is like on the cusp of tears, that's what he is saying that he, it's a very strange message to be delivering. It's always the same. Um, I don't know. It's just, a, it's very strange. So Hannah comes out and she, I, I, did, did you feel like that was genuine? No. No. Okay. I think that was just, she knew that 
if she didn't say something, she was going home. So which one was more genuine, her sitting at the table with...